Uh, Jakub Jablonski is here to talk to you about handling uh, really difficult topics in video games, uh, mainly the Nazi occupation of Poland, and the, na the, the name of the game is My Memory of Us, so they're all yours. Thank you. Hi guys, uh, it's very nice to be here. It's my first time in Slovakia and this show, I like it very much. So my topic is how to handle with, uh, let's call it subtle topics in game development. It's based on uh, upcoming title, My Memory of Us, which is first game of uh, our studio. We're from Poland, from Warsaw. And uh, I work personally um, in two companies, in Juggler Games, uh, when I, where I am co-founder co and uh, creative director but I also work also as a cinematic director for Platish Image, uh, also based in Warsaw. Uh, <coughs> I usually work with uh, cinematic CGI, uh, graphics, trailers. Uh, I did uh, all the cinematics for The Hitman, for Watch Dogs 2 reveal trailer, uh, f recent cinematics for Frostpunk, and also, for example, the reveal trailer for the Warhammer Total War 2. But uh, I have like a small experience in game development. Uh, I did only art directing for uh, another Polish game called Bound for PS4. Uh, you can check it, guys, because it's quite a nice artistic project. But my colleagues from the studio, their exp experience is much bigger. They were producers and lead designers on projects like Sniper 1, Sniper 2, Real Boxing, and just a few more titles. Okay, so what is my memory of us? Uh, sometimes it's hard to tell it with your own words. You have to use uh, other people's words. Uh, the title is uh, in the middle of, the, of its production, the studio is one, one year old, and we are creating a platformer puzzle game in a 2 and a half D environment. Uh, the game refers to the situation uh, of, the Polish of, of the Nazi occupation in Poland, and it also refers to the, some elements of the Holocaust history and the uh, uh, ghetto situation in Warsaw. Uh, so, <clears throat> pretty short w what the game is about, but uh, later on I would like to talk why we try to fight with such topic. The game is about two children, you can uh, control them separately. By the way, I encourage you guys to play the game because we have a demo level here. Uh, <coughs> so we have two heroes, uh, as I said, you can play with them separately, uh, but you can uh, connect them into pair. And we have a boy and a girl. Girl is like a fast runner, she's uh, stronger than boy, she's uh, a bit naughty, she can shoot the sling. And the boy does the stealth stuff. But when you connect them, they can exchange their abilities. They ho are holding their hands, and when the girl is leading the pair, they can run. When he's leading the pair, they can do stealth together. So mainly, this is like a uh, in game mechanics in a short way. Uh, the game looks like this. It's hand-painted. It's a pretty simple one. Uh, uh, it's mostly exploration with some stealth elements and uh, abstract puzzles and we try to refer in history, uh, to history. But how we try to do it, <coughs> uh, this, my speech is about this uh, stuff. Okay, I encourage you guys to play the game because these are just screenshots, so they don't work properly without the movement, uh, but they show uh, an idea. Okay, so why? This is how Warsaw looks today. It looks like a pretty modern, uh, quite rich city. Uh, but here we have something different. It's like a digital sculpture representing the amount of damage dealt to Warsaw during the uh, World War II. So it's pretty huge. Uh, many historians compare it to Hiroshima. But there is one difference. Uh, Warsaw was destroyed, destroyed without purpose. Uh, without tactical or strategical reason, it was destroyed uh, only thanks to the hate. This is a uh, <coughs> visualization of Warsaw destroyed by the bombing, by the explosions, by the uh, uprisings, and it was almost erased from the map. Like 95% of uh, the people living there were killed or they have forced to leave the city. So this is like a short history of Warsaw. 
uh, during the World War II. So we experienced almost everything. Uh, at the end of this uh, events, the city was destroyed uh, completely when the German army was uh, leaving the city. Everything, uh, the, the explosives were set and the, there was n uh, city no more. But we experienced two uprisings. One is quite famous, uh, which is a Jewish uprising, which took place in a, a Jewish ghetto in Warsaw, by the way, which was the biggest one uh, <coughs> during the World War II. Uh, but we also had a Polish uprising where the civilians were trying to fight with a German army. Of course, both of these uprisings failed, and what was left was nothing. But <coughs> When you walk on the streets of Warsaw today, you can see these uh, modern buildings I showed you at the beginning, but you can see also the candles. Every, every corner you have uh, some kind of a monument which refers to the history of uh, people, civilians, and also uh, soldiers. I'm not from the city of Warsaw, I'm from the city of Luc, which is like a second biggest city, but I worked there for like 10 years, and uh, the city somehow inspires me. Uh, and I believe the biggest inspiration for our game and for our studio is the city itself because uh, this is the place where the modern technology and the old history meets. So <coughs> when we are trying to analyze the uh, history of our city, uh, we knew that we can create some histories about soldiers, about uh, resistance, uh, about generally speaking fighting, fighting, but we didn't want to show uh, violence, we didn't want to show uh, shooting, we didn't want to create a game about fighting itself. <coughs> of course, there are like thousands of histories of civilians too, but uh, nowadays like a time when some studios try to touch this topic, like for example the game This War of Mine, which touches the topic of civilians during the uh, conflict. But there is also a story which is like pretty subtle one uh, that refers to the Polish Jews population uh, during the World War II and their sad, sad, sad history. <coughs> but, okay, the history itself is like super huge and our studio is super small. So we knew we had to find a special way to treat the topic uh, in a gentle form. We had some memories, uh, not ours, but of course, memories of our families. Uh, we call them memory shards. And we had an idea that we want to show something positive, to find something colorful in the world of destruction full of atrocities and definitely sad, sad stories. But this one would be hard because few games try to touch the topic of uh, Holocaust of, uh, of general atrocity and most of them failed. Uh, but it's not the time to talk about the guys who failed, but about the way we tried to choose to fight with this one and stay true to the topic, stay subtle, stay uh, gentle. So it was the time to find a reference. What other people managed to, uh, how, how other people managed to find the idea uh, to uh, deal with such uh, such stuff. So I believe that everyone knows the movie called Life Is Beautiful by Roberto Benigni. Uh, it's about father who is playing a special game with his son. Uh, they are staying in a death camp uh, and the father is pretending that he's playing a game with his son. So basically it's, it's like a, creating a different world for his son uh, to help him not suffer uh, from the war events. Yeah? Then we have like a very famous graphic novel uh, by Art Spiegelman, Mouse, which uh, the story which it presents is pretty literal, but the form, uh, the graphic novel form itself, is uh, much more complex. Uh, <coughs> all the characters there are represented by uh, animal uh, image, and uh, the story is pretty symbolic. And then we have the movie, another movie that I believe that everyone knows, uh, Pan's Labyrinth, which is about uh, two kind of monsters. One of these monsters are like fantasy monsters, that uh, are imagined by the girl hero. But the movie also t tells the story of the real monsters which live in our souls, because this one also touches the topic of Nazi occupation and Nazi government of uh, the country the movie takes place in. So we knew that we have to create like a special word of reflection, like a parallel metaphor to tell our story. And the best way to tell a story in such a way is to create a fairy tale. 
<coughs> but still we had an idea what to actually want to tell about. We are a small studio, so we knew that we want to tell a small story uh, in order to stay credible. But the story itself, as I told you in the beginning, is not a small one, because all the victims, the topic is still fresh, even if it's like 60 years old. Uh, it's still a very important topic. It's in every media almost every day. And uh, these are the numbers of the victims. They are not only from Warsaw, but they are generally victims of the <coughs> Second World War II uh, in Poland. So we tried to find something that connects them. Uh, and that we thought that maybe this symbol is something that could be idea for our small story. And this is how we designed our characters. We took a uh, girl from the Schindler's List uh, because she's like an archetype. She's a very powerful image. And she helped us in creating uh, symbols and mechanics inside the game. And we took also the image of the very famous sculpture of the young boy who was taking part in, a, in, a, in Warsaw Uprising during Warsaw Occupation. But what we did, we took away his gun and we created a pair of heroes. The working title was Friends. Well, this explains everything. Because we didn't want to tell a story about occupation, about war, but about friendship and about special bond between uh, characters. Visible in a storytelling, but also visible in a gameplay mechanics. But uh, the topic is like, still didn't help us to fight with the hard topic, because we wanted to target our game to the younger audience, uh, like starting from 25 years old and maybe ending like 35 years old, which is me. And we wanted to create a special bond, bond between characters and the uh, young audience. But we didn't want to uh, create bad feelings uh, in other people's minds, because uh, some survivors are still alive. As I said, the topic is still fresh. So we wanted to play with respect for them. <coughs> so, because we are in a mirror world, uh, I believe that we have also the uh, mirror ideas. Because in one leg we are in pop culture, so we are presenting a pop culture entertainment title for the modern audience. Uh, and modern audi audience, modern uh, players, they have some rules, they have some needs, they have some uh, way of uh, uh, playing with uh, games. Yeah, But we also have uh, the survivors, victims, and we have history itself. So we tried to match uh, stuff which is important for the players with the elements that are important uh, to the history and uh, people who still live uh, and work with it. So our mix had to contain like few elements that we designed to, uh, to fight with this uh, topic. Our game has no violence, no symbols, no flags. We try to uh, <coughs> put them our memory shards. We have real heroes reflections. We have little pleasures. But let's go on. The game has no violence in itself. Uh, there is no blood, no shooting, no fighting. Uh, characters uh, cannot be killed. Uh, <coughs> the all can, uh, uh, that can be done to them is they, they can be caught. Uh, and that's all. Uh, you will never see uh, victims, atrocities, corpses, uh, because it's a fairy tale and because we f find out that uh, if we start to deal with uh, the violence uh, of the Holocaust will have to go very deep and this is very 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 dangerous area but we also have no symbols uh, first of all because of respect for them uh, we don't use of course Nazi symbols because in some countries they are forbidden uh, and we don't want to uh, use them in, in pop culture but we also don't have religious symbols uh, because which are, which are very important for the uh, guys living in a city at this time uh, gamers don't like uh, religion inside the games, and religious games are like a, a taboo topic. Uh, but also gamers don't like history itself. <coughs> so there are few ideas, uh, a few reasons that uh, make us remove the uh, Jewish and Polish symbols. Of course, the yellow star is a, was a symbol of... Uh, <coughs> uh, which Nazi gave to... Jews in order to uh, to separate them from the Polish population, uh, and this symbol is like super powerful, uh, and we really 
needed to respect uh, the general idea uh, of the Jewish history. So we, we are thinking about replacing this symbol with something very simple. Uh, but at the end, we decided to uh, remove them at all. We decided that the red color is going to be the only symbol. But we also have no flags inside the game. We try to be as universal as we can. Uh, we don't say that someone is German, Nazi, Polish, Jewish. We don't care. Uh, it makes the story more universal. Uh, it fits the idea of being a fairy tale much better. And uh, because not only was Warsaw suffered from the Nazi occupation, you can find resemblance in, uh, in our game for the Amsterdam, uh, for Krakow, for other cities that were having a ghetto inside. <coughs> and we have all these memory shards, which is our way to deal with history. Because we don't want to shoot people with history, with facts, with dates, with uh, uh, all the... We are not historians. That's a simple one. But we have, have for example, <coughs> very tiny elements. For example, the black lamp. We have heard a history about uh, the girl who was surviving uh, the Jewish uprising. She was uh, hiding in the canals. And she was lost. She was alone. Uh, and she met a boy who was like eight years old. And it was quite dark in canals, but the boy had a flashlight. So he helped her uh, to uh, go through the canals and leave the city on a safe, uh, on a safe uh, side of the city. But he died. He drowned. So this is like our idea to memorize him and memorize the entire event. For example, I have never met my grandfather. Uh, he, was, uh, he was captured and he, he was staying in Mauthausen concentration camp. Uh, he survived. I, I didn't meet him because he just died before my, uh, uh, me being born. But uh, he went there to the concentration camp because he was printing anti-Nazi leaflets. And uh, my idea to, uh, to give a tribute for him is that we have an entire lever when we can actually print anti-robotic leaflets and glue them to the walls. We, of course, have uh, tons of posters that, that uh, uh, are quite similar to the original posters. Uh, which were like anti-Jewish posters uh, <coughs> in the uh, city of Warsaw. Uh, and we have uh, quite a few uh, important places inside the game. And we ha also, for example, have these sculptures, because not everyone knows that uh, almost every art, art element, sculpture, painting was uh, stolen from uh, Poland and stolen from Warsaw. And we have like few levels when we, when we actually show how robots steal uh, important sculptures and pieces of art. <coughs> and at the left we have, for example, this cooking device, uh, which is like a very tiny memory shard of uh, our CEO, whose family was helping to, to feed the people in a ghetto. So this is our way to deal uh, with, uh, with the small memories. But we also have real heroes. We, we don't show them literally, but you can meet them. A guy at, at the... <coughs> The, the most important guy is the one with the glasses. This is Janusz Korczak, who was like very famous teacher during a uh, uh, period of like World War II. <coughs> but he's famous for uh, leading an orphanage inside a ghetto. Uh, he was taking care of Jewish and Polish children there. And uh, his story is quite sad because he was a really great uh, uh, teacher and uh, he really loved these children he uh, was sent to the concentration camp with the children. But uh, Germans, and even after that, uh, Polish resistance uh, gave him the uh, uh, ability to choose if he want to leave uh, and escape. But he still decided to uh, go with children and stay with them forever. And you can, you can meet him uh, in our game, and you, you can actually visit the orphanage and do some quests for the guy. We also have Irena Sandler, who was like a Polish Schindler, she helped to uh, escape 2,500 children uh, from the ghetto. She was keeping their names on a, in a jar hidden in her garden. She was keeping these names in order to help them remember their identity. Uh, and I be believe it really touches our uh, title of the game, My Memory of Us. We also have uh, some resistant, mem resistant members. For example, this is Mordechai Anielewicz, the guy on the left, who was leader of the uh, Jewish uprising. Of course, the uprising failed and he died. But we can also meet some uh, other historical guys. We can meet uh, Spielmann and we can, for example, dance to music he plays on the piano. <clears throat> but we have also some little pleasures inside the game because we try to create a special feeling of uh, something full of charm, something delicate, something maybe childish, 
but uh, something with very silent context of the Holocaust. Uh, we can dance in, in our game to the music, we can ride a bicycle, we can uh, do the skating, uh, we can take a picture uh, of our characters, do the selfie. Uh, and these moments are like, I call them hard moments because they are very important for the uh, general idea of friendship which is growing between the two characters. Because uh, our idea of the fr friendship uh, is looking like this. We are trying to present how the friendship is being born. Uh, the characters are not friends from the beginning of the game. And, uh, spoiler alert, uh, the girl is not red from the beginning of the game. And we have, once again, we have the universal setting. We are trying to, uh, to capture the Warsaw mood uh, in our game, but we are also trying to capture mood of other uh, cities. Uh, the game is hand-painted, it's full of steampunk elements, it's like a mirror reflection of the, of the scenography of these times. We, uh, we also have uh, <coughs> good reference for the costumes, but we try to uh, change them. Uh, generally speaking, art in this game tries to uh, uh, create a special language. It's pretty childish. It's uh, not a perfect one. It's like inspired by knife painters and by very old-school, uh, pre-war uh, Disney movies. And the same is with animation. Uh, everything here is like hand-painted, created in a Photoshop, uh, and created in a mo modular way. Almost every wall, every element, every lamp uh, is created at first in Photoshop and then uh, transferred into Unity Engine, <coughs> which is, now we have a special script which helps us to create an entire level in Photoshop and export it on many, many, many layers uh, to the Unity engine, which makes uh, work much faster. There are only two artists working on the game. Uh, I'm working, uh, I'm mainly drawing the stuff here, but we also have uh, Asha, who is uh, also doing some kind of levels. Uh, and uh, we decided to share that I'm doing like the crazy steampunk levels and she's doing levels which refer more to the history of the city. And a very important part of our game is like simplification. Uh, first of all, we designed a special language of symbols. Oh, this one is maybe not very unique, but uh, our characters can talk, communicate with non-playable characters, uh, and communicate between themselves using very, very simple icons. Because there's almost no text in the game, uh, and we still didn't decide how our uh, voiceover is going to work because it's not created yet. But uh, it helps us to communicate with the player and create like a bond between characters because uh, we have two kinds of uh, communication. We, we see what characters actually talk and we see what they think. Uh, we don't have like a very uh, special way of helping players to play the game. Uh, we do it through the uh, this, this comic book clouds. Uh, our characters sometimes, when you have a problem, just think about the solution uh, in a pretty abstract way. And we, of course, have the fantasy element. Uh, for example, this one uh, is a flying whale, which actually is a locomotive uh, which uh, commands the train that is flying to the concentration camp, which is quite an uh, interesting story to tell because on our uh, Facebook and Instagram profiles, we have some wallpapers, and we have wallpapers with this flying train. And the comments are, how cute, how nice, what is it, where is it flying to? And sometimes we try to answer these questions, but uh, for example, just giving the GPS uh, numbers. Uh, <coughs> okay, because the, the funniest thing here is that uh, reactions are very different. Mostly they're positive, but uh, at the beginning, when we were trying to create this uh, mirror image of the of the historical world, we thought that it's going to be too obvious. That uh, it's like still too literal. It's okay. You see schools, you see German Nazi soldiers, robots, and everyone should know that it refers to Holocaust, to refers to the history of occupied city. And you know what? Many people have no idea what it is about. Uh, we are revealing the title in uh, Boston on Pax East. Uh, and we asked people to glue some uh, some cards with the, their comments to the wall, and most of the comments were like, adorable, cute, very nice, we love the characters, I like that it's about friendship. 
which was quite crazy for us. And uh, the, the event itself helped us to find the real audience for the game, because we thought that the main idea is to show this game to the male audience, like 25, 35 years old. And not, now we know that uh, guys who are most interested in the game are the girls who, live, who love the puzzles and they lo love the charming element of art and children. Which is quite funny because uh, our demo here, this is an alpha version, so it still has some bugs. But it's definitely playable and you can finish the game. And w when we are showing this one on PAX, uh, the PAX is like a huge indie event uh, full of many professional developers. And developers had problems with uh, just passing through the game and finishing it in a normal way. And children like 10 years old were finishing the demo, which usually takes 25 minutes. They did it in five, which is like crazy for us. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, we were very, uh, very afraid that our game is going to be considered as controversial, cheap, uh, kitsch, I don't know, even disgusting or in a wrong way. But when we revealed it, uh, we were really surprised by comments and uh, by general uh, fe feeling which was uh, traveling on network. Uh, we have quite uh, broad uh, impact on the network. Uh, some really huge uh, network spots were writing about us. We were the most uh, happy to welcome the guys from Polygon on PAX uh, East and it was very pleasant talk because the guy actually cried after this one, and which was like very emotional and <clears throat> very surprising for us. Um, yeah, recently we've been on uh, Digital Dragons, uh, where we once again were surprised because we won the uh, main award for the best of the uh, indie showcase, which is like completely crazy because the game is in the, in the middle of the production. But I believe it's the idea of this contest that you show games which are work in progress. And uh, it shows that, uh, for now, uh, we are not missing the subject, that we are de dealing with this one gently. Uh, but still, we are in the middle of the production. We have, like, the game is going to be, like, four hours long. Uh, there will be, like, 19 levels. We already have 12 of them in the, on the silver level, which means that they are playable, but there are bugs and no saves, of course. Uh, and some elements are missing. Uh, but we are on a good way to, to finish this one, and we are trying to hit uh, 2018, uh, maybe first quarter, maybe second one. For now, it's ma our main target is PC, but if everything is going to be okay, we are going to uh, try to hit some consoles. Um, and yeah, guys, it was pretty fast. Uh, I encourage you to ask some questions and uh, play the game. Hi, I'd like to ask if you have, uh, if you are going to leave it up to the player to uh, make up their mind about what it is about, or whether you're going to do an aha at the end. Uh, yeah, it's a good question because uh, sometimes it's difficult to talk what this game is about, how it refers to the history, uh, and of course I did it here today, yeah, but it's a presentation. But uh, when talking with gamers, we are not trying to tell you that, oh, play our game, it's about Holocaust, no. Uh, journalists do it. So uh, the historical element is going to be there, but it's going to be presented like a, by the collectible elements. Uh, it's quite similar to the Violent Hearts game, but we are not going to tell like very large history part of the certain objects. We are going to concentrate on the people. We just want to present like 10 or 15 characters and tell their stories because gaming medium for me is like the most powerful one. And uh, Korczak, Janusz Korczak and Irina Sandler, they had like movies about themselves. One was a Hollywood movie, but very bad one, and it's not remembered. And Korczak's uh, movie about Korczak was created by Vida like 60 years ago, so no one knows about it. And I believe that these guys need to be in pop culture, because for me they are like Batman. Okay, another one? Don't be shy. Okay, I'll ask then. Uh, you mentioned that the original title was Friends, so yeah. why did you change the title to m My Memory of Us? Well, you know, there recently there are 
many uh, cases, uh, legal cases about titles uh, in a, on a games market. And if you add a dot between each uh, letter in friends, you'll get the name of a TV series and you're going to be sued. But I believe that, that My Memory of Us is a much more powerful title because, uh, because the game is about memory and friendship. That's it. Okay, another one? Well, thank you. Thank and you, guys.